I never, ever wanted to be making this video. Making this video means that I have done something very, very stupid. Hello! Welcome back to The Little Struggle. Um, today I'm talking about how I managed to bring home the mosaic virus. Because, you know, being quarantined for a human virus was not exciting enough, I also needed to throw a plant virus in the mix. Yeah. So, this video is going to be talking about a couple of things. Um, I'm going to talk about where I got the plant, what I was thinking, aka not much, when I bought the plant, when I brought it home, what I did with it, what I didn't do with it, how I found out that it had the virus, and then kind of everything I've learned about the virus. So bear with me, it's going to be a lot of talking. I do not have the plant in front of me today, so the setup's going to be a little different than what you're maybe used to with my videos, because I don't want to risk infecting the rest of my plants any more than I've already risked it. So the plant is currently in isolation, but I will show you guys some photos and videos to kind of sprinkle in um, and illustrate what I'm talking about as it's needed. So I guess where we're going to start is about a week ago now, a week and a half ago-ish, I went to Trader Joe's for my grocery shopping. I love Trader Joe's. They are my favorite. I do at least 80% of my grocery shopping there. Um, their food's fantastic. The prices are fantastic. They're always so nice and so friendly. And this is not sponsored. I just really love Trader Joe's. One of my favorite things about Trader Joe's is the fact that they have plants outside. So during these quarantine times, while you're waiting to get through the line to go into Trader Joe's, you can peruse the plants. And I like to look at them from afar and then look a little closer up. And every time I move up in line, I get more and more excited because I'm getting closer to the plants. And then I saw them, the raffidophoras. And they were so pretty and there were so many of them and they were massive and lush and I will insert a photo here later um, but they were amazing and I loved them and they were beautiful and so I looked through them and I saw that there were a couple that were kind of yellow so I picked one that looked slightly less yellow and I stuck it in my basket and I went on about my grocery shopping now if you are a newer plant parent you might not pick up on what I didn't say I did um, if you're a pro, like I am not, you definitely picked up on what I did not do. I did not inspect the plant. I did not look for pests. I did not look for viruses. I did not look for anything other than slightly obvious yellow leaves. I picked it up, I put it in my basket, and I took it, took it home. And that, that was the very big stupid thing that I did. I took the sick plant home. And of course at the time I didn't know that it was a sick plant, but it was, and I should have known, and if I had done my due diligence, I would have known. So I brought it home and I posted some photos about how beautiful it was and like 200 people liked those photos. They were like, oh my God, your plant's so pretty. I can't believe you only got it for $12. And I was like, I know, it's an amazing find, right? Thank God for Trader Joe's. Which to be clear, I still love Trader Joe's. I will always love Trader Joe's. I will still buy Trader Joe's plants. But next time I will inspect plants before I bring them home, no matter where I'm bringing them home from. Because if I had, I wouldn't have bought the plant. I wouldn't have later on that evening received a message from Danae of Folia Collective, who is amazing, and I highly recommend following them if you don't already. I will put a link in the description. Um, I wouldn't have gotten a message from her saying, oh, just wanted to let you know, yours might be totally fine, but I was at a different Trader Joe's a couple days ago, and they looked sick. Like, really, really, really sick. Like, 99% mm, certain mosaic virus sick. So, you know, not to alarm you or anything, but you might want to check your plant. Of course, I was alarmed, and I did panic, and I rushed out onto my patio in a panic and checked, and guys, it's so bad. Now, I had already unpotted it. I had already put it into a planter with another plant. I had already split it into three because it was so thick and lush and beautiful that I was like, I'm going to really make the most of this plant. It was in a pot with another plant overnight. So for about nine hours um, before I got to it, I immediately pulled it out and took a closer look at it. And you guys, I really should have seen it. I should have seen it a lot sooner. I should have known that something was amiss. I had seen some suspicious spots. Try saying that five times fast. I had seen suspicious spots, seen suspicious spots, seen suspicious spots, seen suspicious spots. Wow! <laughs> that was only three times. 
I had seen some suspicious spots. Oh, I added some that time. I had seen some suspicious spots. And me being the optimist that I strive to be, had chalked it up to nutrition deficiency. Poor lighting at Trader Joe's. Maybe they got a little dry before they were watered. I don't know. I had just written it off like an idiot. And I had done this because I really wanted this plant. Now, I already have a raffidophora. I didn't need this plant. I just wanted it. I coveted it. I sinned. And for that reason, I was punished with the mosaic virus. I had seen some spots that were round and kind of translucent-y. Not fully translucent, but the leaf just wasn't as opaque in those spots as it should be. They are also a darker color. It reminded me a lot of what cold damage looks like, um, in that if you hold it up to light, you can kind of see through it a little more in those spots than you feel like you should be able to. I hope that makes sense. I'll include lots of photos. So I had noticed those and was like, oh, maybe it's cold damage, which is stupid because it's California. In April, which means it's summer, we do not have cold damage in April in California, at least not in Southern California, which I suppose it could be cold damage from wherever the plant came from originally, but I digress. So I'd seen those spots. I had seen some yellowing, some streaking, and I was kind of just like, eh, I'm sure it'll be fine. Update, it is not fine. So after getting that message from the lovely Danae Afolia Collective, I went online and I did some research, and as far as I can tell, it is in fact the mosaic virus. Now, things to look for in your plants, especially if you unfortunately bought one of these, um, you are going to notice yellow streaking and kind of a mosaic pattern. That is where it got the name. You'll also see possibly some round spots like these that I was talking about a few minutes ago. Those are also signs of not just the mosaic virus, but a number of possibilities, both um, other viruses, bacterial infections, fungal infections. So if you see spots like this, you wanna be super alert and definitely take action right away. New growth on a plant that is infected with the mosaic virus will be really deformed. Um, it may be a lot smaller, it may show some brown spots, and if there's any fruit that's produced, like say a strawberry plant or an eggplant or something, um, then it may have warts, it may have brown spots, and overall just be really kind of disfigured. Unfortunately, there is no cure for plant viruses. There's no cure for the mosaic virus. Once your plant is infected, it is infected for life. Um, it is a terminal disease though, so once it's infected, it probably won't live terribly long. The best thing that you can do for yourself and for the plant is to put it out of its misery and chuck it in the trash. I know it hurts me to say it, especially if it's a really rare plant, a beautiful aeroid, we all love them so much, but it really is the best thing that you can do because there is no cure for it. Now, when I say chuck it in the trash, chuck it in the trash. Don't compost it because if you do, you will infect all of the compost and then you will go and infect all of the plants that you use that compost on. So please, bag it up, take it to the dumpster, say your goodbyes, pour one out for the homie. It's very sad, but it really is the best thing that you can do. The virus is transmitted in a few different ways, the most prevalent being through pests. So you can think of it just like with a human virus and a mosquito, right? The mosquito bites a person, it transmits the disease, it travels along to the next poor person, it bites that person, that person is now infected as well. Same thing with your plants. A pest bites the plant, maybe it's a mealybug, maybe it's thripes, they bite the plant, they move on to the next plant, they bite that plant, that new plant is now infected also. The virus can also be spread though through contact. So if you are using a shovel or a pair of scissors on the infected plant and then you go use those items on a new plant without sterilizing them, it will infect the new plant. Now, if it's something like the nursery pot that the plant was in or the potting soil that it was in, it's definitely easiest to just toss it out. You don't want to try to sanitize that stuff. But things like your tools can easily be sterilized. You can use either 70% alcohol, so that's the label on the bottle that you want to look for. It needs to be at least 70% or higher. 
or one part bleach to five parts water. And that recommendation comes from the CDC, the American Center for Disease Control. You want to sterilize anything that the plant has potentially come into contact with. So as I gave in the example a minute ago, that includes your shovel, your scissors, any surfaces the plant was on, um, anything at all that you think it might have come in contact with. Those are best practices when it comes to sanitizing your equipment. I do recommend that you do that on a regular basis, which is not something I have historically been the best about, but I definitely will be making every effort going forward because you never know when you're gonna bring home a new plant and it's gonna be less than healthy. I also wanna to touch really quickly on the fact that it, it came from Trader Joe's and that I've been really open about that. I considered not sharing where I'd gotten the plant. Um, I don't want this to come across as a hate post or as me telling people not to shop at Trader Joe's or not to buy plants at Trader Joe's. I think Trader Joe's often has beautiful plants at fantastic prices. I have bought a lot of plants from them in the past and I will continue to do so in the future. This can happen to anybody. It has happened in recent memory to Lowe's and Home Depot as well. It can happen to big growers, small growers. It's just kind of the way life works sometimes. I don't blame them for this. I blame myself because ultimately it's my responsibility to be checking before I bring new plants home. And I like to assume positive intent. I work for a company that's really big in assuming positive intent and that's something that I try to carry with me in life. I don't think that this was anything that anyone did intentionally. It's not like they were trying to pull one over on me, you know, stuff happens. And so I just want to be really clear about that and really upfront about that. I still 1000% love and support Trader Joe's. Um, this is just a really unfortunate situation to find ourselves in. So if you feel like you have a plant that is a little suspicious, number one piece of advice, don't panic. I panicked and it did not help me at all. So don't panic. Isolate it, watch it, and reach out to plant experts in your community. You can do that either on Instagram, on YouTube, or even at your local garden center. Um, garden centers are full of plant people, either customers or employees, who love talking about plants, so why not pick their brains a bit? I was just reminded by the husband that the label on the plant actually said it came from um, Glendora, California. So I don't know if that helps. If you are in a different area and you happen to see one of these at Trader Joe's, you or anywhere else, um, and it's from somewhere else, you may be safe, but I highly recommend that you still check out the plant really carefully and just be extra sure. If you come to the conclusion that it is in fact the mosaic virus or another plant virus, the best thing you can do is sanitize, 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 and throw it out. I know. I know it's sad, I know it's hard. I have been isolating mine, but we'll be checking it after this video. So keep me in your thoughts, guys. <sighs> what a day. If you found this video helpful, please leave a comment down below, hit the like and subscribe buttons. Lay down. <laughs> He's sitting there in the door. <laughs> Dogs, y'all. I had seen some sub sub blah, blah, blah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Low streaking and kind of a mosaic pattern. That is where it got the name. Do I need to do that over? I can't remember where I was, like, or how I started it. Do you want to stop the recording? And... No. We can reclapse sync. No, it's fine. Something about streaks.
Okay. So. Nobody wants to cooperate with us today. <laughs> Thank you for the ASMR that I'll be able to include in the video. Jesus. Or even Wardy from descriptions. What? What the hell did you just say? I, I don't know why I said from descriptions. That made no sense. The virus can also be thread though. Thread. <laughs> it can be thread though. are best practices. <laughs> it is not something that I have been historically. <laughs> Those are some sterilization best practices. Oh my god! <laughs> I just want to finish this video. Been burning your toast. Beautiful plants at fantastic prices. I have bought a lot of plants from them in the past in the blast. <laughs> the chloroplast. <laughs> <laughs> Fat dad joke. Fat dad joke. <laughs>